Okay, looks like I'm already live. Uh, hello everyone, I don't know how many are on this live, but in a few minutes I hope uh, uh, Susanna will be with me on this live. Okay. Hi there, Kevin, nice to see you. Savio, Miss Quita. Welcome to this live stream. I'm going to be interviewing Susanna Toscano. Very excited to be doing my first live stream. And uh, uh, let me know in the live uh, whether... Hello, Yatini Malati. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Yes. Catholic matchmaking has joined. Now, how do I add you to the live? Uh, uh, Catholic matchmaking, how do I add you? An invite. <clears throat> so tell me how you heard about this live stream. What do you want to ask Susanna while we are on the live stream? And uh, Susanna, can you? Hi, Father. Hi. 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 Hi, Susanna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got stuck in a blessing, and uh, that's how I'm not in my usual place. Uh, so I'm, I'm also stuck with my Google Sheets, <laughs> which I had planned for this live stream. So anyway, we'll do our best. Uh, maybe we we'll just start with a prayer, Susanna, so that we are guided yeah. by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us throughout this uh, this life, and uh, that our internet connections may be strong, and that we may be able to keep our discussion focused and helpful for all those who are participating in this live stream. May Mary, our mother, intercede for us and keep us ever close to her Son, our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So welcome, Susanna, and I'm so delighted to have this uh, chat with you this evening. And thank you to everyone who has taken the time to join in for this live chat. So first of all, Susanna, I hope people who have joined this live have already read our descriptions and know a little bit about the history, about how we got to know each other and, uh, and how uh, our paths crossed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so first of all, I want to congratulate you and Joel on a very well done job on that Catholic couple in uh, the Redemptress Media Center channel. We have two very viral videos going out, out there on our channel. And uh, so kudos to you too. It is good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, Susanna, before um, we go straight into the questions about the book, um, I wanted to ask you, what was the inspiration that uh, led you to write the book? And for whom is this book? I missed your last question, Father. What was the inspiration and? And uh, for whom is this book? Right. So um, I am fairly newly married. I mean, not actually that new now, but uh, two and a half years. And when Joel and I were um, discerning and talking, we actually had a list of questions given by our community but it was um, created by um, people in the Philippines and it was a little outdated and it didn't connect completely with our own culture and our own experience so some of it was helpful but I remember even at that point Joel and I were like there should be something for Indian Catholics there should be something that could be helpful for people in our particular situation and then over the next couple of years, you know, I've been working with the whole Catholic matchmaking website with people who are in the state of life. And a lot of things came up which sort of seemed um, very obvious that these things need to be addressed. These are things that need to be talked about. 
and then people actually asked me a few people asked me they said do you have a list of questions so i said oh i mean so i used to send people that old list and then i was like oh maybe i should write some list so i started writing a few lists and i said oh why not put it together into sort of some sort of format and then i said why not make it into a book and add you know personal stories and make it a little more interesting and easily accessible to people and so i think it was like a work of progress something that didn't start off with the idea of a book um but seeing a need you know seeing a need and feeling that the lord had put me in a unique position to fill it and of course i love writing i love telling stories <laughs> since the time i was a child i've been writing um and so i think it's one of the charisms that god's given me to uh, bring him to the world so uh, it was just a matter of being obedient to the leading of the spirit and moving forward and the cool thing is you know seeing people who have received it and hearing from them um i can see already even though it's not you know this is a quite a small project you know maybe like 200 people have got the book but um you know seeing people's response shows me that it really is something god is doing so yeah, yeah please god so all great things start small so uh, what about mm-hmm. for whom is the book who do you think would like to read the book let's the book is called let's talk about it for those who do not know susanna has written a book on uh, it's not really a theoretical book but it's kind of a handbook to help you prepare for marriage as we catholics understand it so uh, for whom uh, do you think this book will be useful so it's very specifically it's for couples who are in the process of getting to know each other and want to decide if they should get married um but actually it could be for many more than them um i i have heard from singles who have read it who found it very helpful just to start of uh, start thinking about it because of support um and what are your desires and hopes where is, how is god leading you and sometimes things that we've never thought about before so it's i think it's helpful for anyone who is open to the vocation of marriage and also for those who are guiding those who are um planning to get married or who are in that state of life i think that would be very helpful so priests or lay leaders or communities anyone who has that same heart and wants to help couples in this area i think it would be helpful for them i found it useful myself also in terms of um ways in which uh, uh, i could uh, i'm of course uh, priest would not uh, be able to have all the conversations that you have put up but it's appropriate coming from someone who is married um uh, so uh, the next question i wanted to ask you susanna is um uh, should priests and religious get involved with with married couples or uh, young people discerning marriage or do they have nothing to say because after all they've chosen the celibate life so what can they add to young people and to married couples did you have anyone uh, a priest or a religious guiding you on your journey to marriage so i actually didn't really have anyone who right just we just went through the basic um um you know things that we had to fill in at the parishes and we attended the engaged encounter um retreat which was held well, mostly run by lay people there was also a priest present um but it's one of the things actually i wanted my whole life to be able to have a priest who have been you know close enough and who are really able to understand and relate but i've not always had that um but i really think that they have a very unique role um to play in this because for one priest have a position right that um in every couple who comes to the church to get married there's a priest who is going to be in connection and contact with them so you have a very unique role in that you can be there you know um but also you know jesus was in married right but um jesus is essential for our marriages and your people you priests who are representing christ what a beautiful way to help couples you know just to be there for them to ask them good questions to mentor them talk to them um i think to um, guide them to holiness because finally a lot of marriage preparation and all of that stuff you know we talk about a lot of things but it comes down to holiness and being open to the lord and you know that's what priests do that's what um, the heart of a priest is as i mean i've seen in you and many yeah. other priests so i think there's a very yeah, special one of the role inspirations sorry to interrupt <laughs> sorry uh, 
yeah uh, uh, one of the inspirations for me as a priest was pope saint john paul the second and he uh, uh, loved young people and he loved married people and you could see that in most of his writings and i think his theology of the body came with his pastoral experience with young people and as they transitioned mm-hmm. into marriage as well mm-hmm. so uh, so thanks for that susanna so we do have something to contribute that's for all the priests mm-hmm. and religious who are on the live stream and for those who are uh, yeah uh, sadly i guess we do not um accompany young people enough uh on their journey to marriage we just work as administrators very often and not really pastors on the journey to marriage so that's something to take back home now moving uh, into your book susanna um i read it uh, from page to page it was very easy reading and very interesting reading as well with all your uh, personal examples and uh, anecdotes and uh, uh, very practical tips in your first uh, introduction i think you you mentioned that in the previous generations we did see a lot of people stick by their marital vows and you know uh, by sheer force of will power they uh, they stuck to but uh, in some ways uh children who grew up in such marriages did not buy it and so what has changed in our generation and what is needed in our generation for marriages to be strong um so in some ways i think we glorify you know older the older generation that they were oh, back in the day everything was so perfect but that's not necessarily true there were obviously good and bad marriages there were you know uh, things that they were stronger and things that they were weaker in and i mean it really is beautiful that people did stick it out through um so difficult circumstances that they didn't maybe take the easy way out always um but at the same time i think for a lot of people you know a lot of young people by looking at the marriages around us our parents marriages or other than saying you know it's not enough to just stick it out <laughs> you also want to be happy you want to see really healthy and holy relationships you want to see um, people who are really um thriving in their marriages and not just surviving you know and maybe people didn't know that that was even something that god wanted you're like no you just get married and then you just deal with <laughs> whatever you've been given um but you know as we grow in our relationship with the lord we say okay like the lord wants uh, us to have solid strong marriages and seeing the fruit of solid and strong marriages you know it's such a beautiful thing for the world um and so i think that it's really um something that we want something better like stronger i'm not saying anything bad about our parents generation our grandparents they probably did the best they could with what they had you know um but now we do have tools we do have resources we do have maybe a, a knowledge that uh it's possible you know i remember once talking to someone they were like oh it's just that's just the way it is you know you see brokenness in families and that's just the way it is and i said no you know we have jesus he came to bring healing he came to bring wholeness and fullness and it's possible for things to change and things to grow for people to grow and for marriages to grow and i've seen that i've seen it happen in real life um you know with a lot of marriages that have grown and so i think it's definitely possible and i guess one of the things i want to do is encourage young people to think about these things beforehand you know not just sort of falling into marriage like oh yeah that's just what happens you have to do it like that uh, but saying no like i'm willing to put the work in i'm willing to um do what it takes to at least do my part to build a strong marriage and a, a healthy and a holy marriage yes uh that's so true so uh, for so what do you say that for this generation we have to see that marriage is something beautiful in order to aspire for it uh yeah. otherwise why would anyone want to get into something that's just about sticking it out like a good soldier you know without getting any joy out of it and uh, yeah and so all the more nowadays uh our generation needs to see happy and holy marriages not just mm-hmm. holy marriages but happy and holy marriages yeah, i think if they're really holy they'll also be happy <laughs> <laughs> that's 
That's um, true. And the, the thing is also in the secular world, you know, a lot of people might be going through the same process of looking at their parents and their, you know, older generation's marriages. And many of them are disillusioned, you know, and they say, why get married at all? And, you know, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment and failure. And, you know, just why not just live together or, you know, and you can end it easily. Um, and for us, we have something better to offer, you know, and better to receive as Catholics. We really believe in St. John Paul has done such a beautiful uh, job of, you know, sharing that and saying, like, hey, this is possible. This is beautiful. This is good. And so for us, we are not... Um, we don't want to become cynical or just, you know, just disappointed and like, well, everybody, everything sucks and, you know, everything yeah. is doomed to failure. I say, no, it's possible. Like, it's good if you're disillusioned with bad marriages because that means you're willing to um, look for a good marriage. Yeah. I think Jesus also faced the same situation in his time because these Pharisees also, they were saying, Moses allowed us to divorce. So they had also settled for a compromise. But I think young people who are looking for true love, somewhere deep down in their hearts, they know that it should last for a lifetime. Yeah. And that's what marriage is all about. It's about a love that lasts for a lifetime. And I think that's what Jesus did when he said, that's not, that's how, uh, because of your weakness, Moses allowed that. But that's not how it was in the beginning. And that's right. where the theology of the body begins, that Jesus has come right. not only to condemn those who are divorced or those who have failed in marriage, but with those words, he is restoring in the heart of man and woman something that was lost by the fall, that capacity to give yourself totally mm -hmm. to someone for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. And that's where I think the, the process of discernment comes, you know, which you talk about so much. Uh, it's about, uh, can I find someone that I can give myself totally to without reservations for the rest of my life? Yeah. And, and that's what needs to be discerned. So moving very quickly to the next question, uh, if I remember my list right. <laughs> uh, 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 what about, you, you speak about how important in the... Um, in the process of discernment dating is but is dating really a thing in india and should it be something that we encourage and uh, uh, how should uh, young people approach dating uh, without you know crossing boundaries or giving false expectations or hopes to someone so i mean we all know that it's not necessarily a uh... It's not traditionally part of Indian culture. We've all come from, you know, at a certain point of maybe even a few generations or as recently as the last generation or our own generation of arranged marriages and where there's heavy parental involvement, where there may not be the chance to really talk um, personally or, you know, on your own. Um, but I think that it's a good, it's a good step forward that now things do seem to be more open, at least in the cities, um, on certain families. Um, and maybe also young people are realizing, you know, I can ask for this just because it was done differently before doesn't mean we can't try to do things differently now. And the main goal should be um, to be able to take responsibility for your own relationships. You can't say, well, you know, my mom and dad chose this person. So, you know, we met once, he looked nice, seemed okay. Like, let's just go for it. Um, but to say, like, no, it's my job. Uh, it's my role to actually get to know this person and to take a decision for myself, you know, whether or not your parents have introduced you to the person. Now, after that, it's up to you to actually get to know the person well. Um, because the, I guess the main point of all of this is we have seen just too many, too many stories of people who um, have gotten married and then uh, realized that there's some major elements missing, uh, major problems, things that they just never talked about before. You suddenly find out that your spouse doesn't want to have children. You know, you suddenly find out that your spouse has a pornography problem that they never talked about and been dealing with for years. Uh, you find out that um, they have unhealthy relationships with um, other people from the past. Or, you know, just things that have been hidden, things that have not been talked about openly. And maybe there was never even an opportunity to talk about it, you know, to be able to just confront these issues at the beginning, your beliefs, your experiences, where you are, what you are really, what your your idea of love is, of marriage is. Um, and so 
I think that's why dating, you know, you can call it different words. You know, people say, oh, "I'm talking to someone." <laughs> you know, sometimes that's more culturally acceptable than dating. But the idea is to be able to one-on-one spend time together. But of course, you know, um, different people have a different idea of dating as well, which is, "Hey, I'm attracted to you. Let's just, you know, hang out romantically." And that's I don't feel like a very healthy thing to do because. Um, you know people say oh, it's just for the experience you know we're just having fun it's just we're young one we only ones but there are always consequences right um, there are always scars that are left and um i was in a way how um, privileged or lucky or whatever when i was pretty young i used to think about these things and i came from a dating world actually i've come from a family and a background where you know my siblings my cousins like my the world that i lived in people did date um but i used to be as you know one of these deep thinkers who was like you know what happens if i date somebody either right now i'm either it's either going to end in a breakup you know and either it's very unlikely perhaps that i'm going to get married at this point you know to anyone i meet and i don't want to go through all of that pain of you know going through a breakup and i don't want to cause anyone else pain and so i feel like it's probably not the right time for me and of course i was also not really tempted because there was not really anyone who i wanted to date <laughs> but um i feel like in a way i was protected from um you know those kind of mistakes that a lot of people make you know and i don't want to condemn anyone because i know <laughs> so many of the people i know have made mistakes and there's always restoration with the lord but um i guess i want to encourage the people who have not gotten into a relationship yet you know uh, to say okay it's all right to it's all right to wait you know i waited for a long time and i'm perfectly happy that you know i had my first kiss with joel <laughs> which you know again that's not something everybody you know you say oh, i wish i could have waited but if you have waited so far um don't be despondent don't worry don't um don't let other people discourage you dating is not necessarily just for the experience it's um something that the lord can give you in order to discern a marriage partner so i guess the most important thing to do is to know why you are dating you know don't date just because uh, even if all of the people in your friends are clearly dating and it just seems so cute and romantic and you have somebody and you know all those like good feelings <laughs> you know i have been there you know you do feel lonely sometimes uh, you go for a wedding and you see everybody dancing closely and you're like oh i wish i had someone <laughs> um and that's perfectly normal and natural um but at the same time um it's good to ask yourself to be intentional about what you do uh why you get into um a relationship to be um to be thoughtful you know even about the other person's heart and about your own heart and don't just um ask for <laughs> ask for trouble you know don't start something which you can't finish i feel like that's one of the big um the best piece of advice i could give people is don't start something which has no possibility of you know being brought to completion being brought to fulfillment if you know you can look at someone and say okay actually i can't marry them i wouldn't marry them i'm not even in a position to get married but we want to be in a relationship so like don't don't start that you know if you do see a possibility if you say okay i would like to get to know this person um you know and they have the same intention they have the same um you know willingness to you know, say okay uh, is god calling us to marry each other then it's a good time to to date and to get to know each other and even then as you said you know there should be some boundaries there should be some um you know things that you talk about beforehand so you don't um, go too far and i actually talked about that in the book you know right at the beginning because i realized that's something we don't vocalize you know either we're scared to say it or um, you know like it's awkward to have these conversations but um, it's good to talk right at the beginning as you're getting to know someone say hey like what is your idea on of um, how to be careful in this relationship how can we be careful with each other's hearts with each other's bodies you know um how can we honor god in the way that we relate to each other and make sure that we don't cross lines that shouldn't be crossed and nobody else really can sort of impose that on you you have to choose that yourself you have to have that desire for holiness that desire for um to honor and respect the other person well and if you talk about it i think it's much easier once temptation comes you know because there will be temptation that's also part of being human So it's good to have those conversations early in the relationship. So supposing there's a young person who uh, this might be out, out of my list but I just thought of it as you were speaking um 
if a, if there's someone that someone likes and they they really are discerning marriage how far would be too far um so you're talking about once they are already you know your, they are already intimacies dating? with regards to intimacies physical emotional mm -hmm. you know that that's a question that we often get asked that as pastors i just wanted to get your thoughts yeah Maybe so I, that's I, obviously I, I something like yeah there's something you know that we sort of wrestled with it's not always an easy answer but i think something that's helpful a guideline that's helpful is um physically if we're talking about physically especially um to say is this something that's leading me to sexual temptation now to have sexual desire is not a bad thing <laughs> you know i think that's something also we need to grow on and say it's okay <laughs> you know when we feel sexual desire it's what we do with it right you know you can um uh, there's it's all sexual desire is not bad and in fact it's brought to completion in marriage but at the same time you know when you feel that it's okay but don't do things that sort of are stoking that desire increasing it more make it more difficult for you to stay chaste so sometimes occasionally you know you cross a certain line and then you realize <laughs> you know based on that that you crossed a line you say oh okay probably we shouldn't do that next time um so i don't like to give very very specific <laughs> lines but you know um i think for a lot of people if you have a you ask yourself very honestly you know you're able to say okay that was definitely making it more difficult for me to have holy and chaste thoughts um and so let's let's not do that next time or let's not put ourselves in that position next time you know if you feel like you've crossed that line go for confession and there's always a chance to start again but i guess the main thing is to remember that specifically sexual stuff anything not just actually having sex but um things which um sort of increase that uh, sexual desire should be reserved for marriage things which show affection things which um show that level of comfort that's okay if you are in a committed relationship not just if you're getting to know each other i think if you're getting to know each other then it's better maybe just hands off completely and just just talk and spend time so i won't tell you all the details of my own relationship but um <laughs> no. one thing It that i do remember saying no and i but i would want to mention one thing is that i actually um had that conversation with joel fairly early and uh, to the point where we didn't even hold hands until we were in a intentional relationship so when we were just talking you know we would spend time we talk but once we decided to intentionally be in a relationship to sort of discern marriage together to like there was a level of um uh, commitment in that you know we're exclusively seeing each other we are sort of walking down a path you know it's still something that of course could possibly not end in marriage but um it was after that that we started holding hands and and that was actually a good thing you know i don't you know some people think oh even that is too much but i think that was a good thing for me because it helped me to open my heart to joel and to be able to relate to him you know uh, to see that he was also you know not just someone intellectually a partner but like romantically as well so again for each couple it might be different you know there are some people who might be uh, have a different uh, standard but it's good to remember that don't uh, you can have a comfort level decision but then sin should always be something that you completely cut off and say okay let's not make any room for the possibility of sin thank you for that susanna i think that's a very wise thing not to put too much detail into it but um uh, one principle that i let your level of intimacy match your level of commitment and um uh, sorry for that missed you know, uh, like let like you said one principle yeah let let your level of intimacy not cross your level of commitment yeah yeah uh, so there should be uh, like what would you do with a a, a friend which you would uh or with a spouse which you would not do with a friend or right. what would you do with your spouse which you would which you would not do with a girlfriend so how yeah. would you know that you are being unfaithful to your wife for example okay. uh, after you're married if if you were had the same level of intimacy with all women or right. all men so so right. you need to establish conceptual boundaries for yourself so that you know when you're being unfaithful and that's where the virtue of chastity comes into the picture you know and i think it's also training. helpful to think about when you're in the um, you know in that dating relationship to think about you know one day i am going to be married to someone it may not be this person 
and will i have any regrets about um you know the way that i related to this person in the past will i have any regrets when i tell my spouse and i wouldn't be so embarrassed to tell my spouse oh i once held hands with someone but i probably would be embarrassed to you know to say anything that i did anything more than that or i'd be sad you know i'd be sad that i had gone that far so um so of course again i you know i want to reaffirm if people have done any of this stuff in the past there is healing there is you know the lord gives us second chances so don't stay stuck in that oh no i you know i've messed up my future marriage because that's not the case um but right now you always have a choice moving forward about how you um deal with the opposite sex how you allow god into uh, your relationships and allow him to form your heart to have a, a heart that values chastity uh moving on susanna what about uh in in one of the chapters you mention to very great detail about the kind of conversations that you can have when you're discerning marriage um can you elaborate why conversations are so important and why you've gone to great length to put in so much detail about conversations so i i guess i've kind of mentioned it is um a lot of the time um so marriage you know everyone talks about so one of the most important things in marriage is communication you know, people say that again and again um but sometimes you know if you didn't communicate beforehand then in the marriage the communication is going to be pretty difficult because you suddenly realize that you're not talking from the same level from the same heart so conversation is really meant to reflect what's in our heart you know um and it only works with very honest conversation very clear direct uh, you know say what you really think say what you really feel um be very honest about stuff um because then it shows what's really in your heart um and if you want to be able to join yourself to another person you have to be able to be of one heart and mind and how can you know if you're of one heart and mind with someone unless you communicate it right unless you have these conversations um so that's really the point of the book is to be able to address things that um, may not otherwise get addressed and i think in our culture we're not really used to very direct communication about many things um you know it's sort of like we want to either smooth things over or just keep the status quo and you know not don't disturb anything and we're not really encouraged to ask difficult questions or to share difficult things and so um that can be a, a problem <laughs> you know that can definitely uh like lead to covering up bad things and to or uh, problematic things things that need to be dealt with um so i just feel like it's better earlier rather than later to um bring up anything that needs to be brought up bring bring it up bring it to the surface um and that way also you know it doesn't mean we're perfect it doesn't mean that you know all our answers and all our thoughts are always going to be perfect but then it sort of gives god also room to work in us and to help us to figure out okay where is god in this when joel and i were talking um some of the things we talked about were not things that you know we had necessarily thought deeply about before but as we talked about them we realized okay hey we do need to talk about this you know like these are um good and important things that are going to affect our future life together so uh, let's talk about it now and um or even things which i would have assumed that you know we felt the same way about but only when we talked about it <laughs> you know we realize oh we're not exactly on the same page but okay let's talk more about it let's let's pray about it and all of these things are going to happen in marriage as well right like you know there are going to be things we're going to talk about how do we raise our kids and where do we send them to school and do we home school and what does that mean and you know there there are so many things that you can't just take unilateral decisions and you're not always going to be on the same page and so as you talk about it and especially you know including the lord you know in our in our conversation and our thoughts we're able to reach a common ground you know we're able to um and the the thing is if before marriage when you talk about these things if you're not able to reach common ground and you reach you know one person is just very uh set on something which seems very um you know not christ like or not christian you know then it's good to know that before you get married you know if someone's you know already sure before marriage they're like uh one way or another i am not going to have more than one child and that's just that how it is it's my life my body my choice you're like all right you know <laughs> i respect that you have that choice to make but we can't get married like that's not uh, how what a christian marriage is and um i don't think that we can have a christian marriage if we move forward like this 
but how would you know unless you talk about it right so yeah so conversation i think is absolutely essential um and you can't do that unless you take time or and unless you're willing to talk about it so um yeah i think the book is also helpful because some people have told me they were they didn't know how much they allowed to talk to talk about you know or they didn't know like how to start these topics um and so i think that the book is sort of meant to smooth that process of saying okay hey we have already decided that we're going to talk about things let's use this tool you know and then it just makes it a little bit easier to start talking about difficult topics so for the benefit of those who have not seen the book what are so, some of those important conversations that you and joel in the process of discerning marriage realized were very important that you you hadn't thought about before but suddenly in the process of your uh, relationship developing you discovered that these three or four conversations are must have conversations for people who are discerning marriage So I think fairly early um and maybe for us because our faith is so central we talked about faith pretty early um and not just like okay I am a catholic and I might mean to stay a catholic but what does that mean for me so I think the faith conversation is extremely important to say like what does this really mean for me to to follow Jesus um and for us it you know it really meant reaching the point to say okay I'm willing to do whatever it takes to to do God's will and i'm willing to you know make sacrifices to um to change my point of view if god is leading us to that and for me that was very important and it was very very important for joel as well so i would say the faith conversation is the most important really because that sort of um, also decides a lot of your other <laughs> decisions you know like how do you make decisions about everything else okay what does god want rather than what is the most secure or safe or comfortable or easy or what is my family one um and then i think it's also very important to talk about um your you know sort of your goals or your ideas about your life moving forward so um some of these things do come up naturally i mean they would come up but it's good to talk about them earlier so even things like the joint family uh, conversation um because a lot of the time people sort of go with the flow and then sort of regret it later so it's better to talk about it in a very thorough and detailed way earlier um because again people think that everything's just going to work out <laughs> everything is going to be fine but that's often not the case so talk about your living situation talk about your um plans for uh caring for your family and you know how to balance marriage and family life and all of that stuff um i think that was those were two very important conversations and then of course the personal issues i think that's also a very important one that it's good to talk about which is um uh, basically being very honest about your own um struggles your own the the things that you are uh, dealing with yourself you know we all have issues so nobody's going to say like hey or this shouldn't <laughs> say you know hey i'm fine you know i have no issues but okay these are some of my weaknesses these are some of the things that um i'm working on you know i i don't want to hurt you um but i want you to be aware that this is something that i struggle with and i want to grow in this area so you know i'm going to do my best to <laughs> to work on this and i want you to hold me accountable when i don't do this um so i think being honest about your own stuff um and bringing it up rather than saying you know hoping that it won't come up or that they'll never find out uh, because they will find out <laughs> you know um yeah so i think talking about personal issues and also uh mental health stuff um maybe uh sins that you habitual sins that you struggle with i think it's very important to have the uh, pornography conversation because again that's something which affects many marriages and people again don't feel um free to talk about it you know um i've heard of men who are trying to get out of it but they don't realize that they can actually talk to their wives about it and say hey i'm struggling in this and please help me you know they think that their wives will just be so angry and not to say it's only a men problem you know that women also struggle with it um but it's better to have that conversation and to know where the other person is at and of course if somebody is uh regularly watches porn and doesn't think it's a problem you know it's probably good to know about that beforehand um because again once you're in the middle of your marriage and you suddenly find that that's 
a very very sad and difficult thing to to deal with yeah i i'm glad you brought up the porn issue because uh it's quite shocking to hear that among catholics uh there is some sense uh, at least in some quarters that watching porn doesn't harm anyone uh mm -hmm. you know it's something that someone does in the private sphere but um mm -hmm. uh we do know as pastors how it devastates marriages when mm -hmm. uh, particularly for a wife she is held up to such a high standard of perfection and also to a kind of objectification uh, yeah. which uh, the porn models are subjected to so yeah. it's really uh, porn is poison because it trains you to see people as things to be used rather than than people to be loved yeah. and uh, that's that's why uh, uh, preparing for marriage uh it, a, a very essential thing is uh, training ourselves not to give in to the temptation to indulge yeah. in porn viewing uh, yeah. it 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 is imperative to train the heart to love to uh, avoid lustful images and i think that's the and i think talking church. about it is a big a big thing you know because um, that's the way the devil also keeps us you know where uh, he wants us to be is by covering it with so much shame that you never you never honest about it you never talk about it but it, sometimes when you just voice out your sin you share it with someone you speak it out you know it's like opening a door and letting the light of god in you know that there's still work to be done for sure but at least the door is open and the door is shut and you're just stuck in this prison so if anyone who is watching this video is struggling in this area there is hope there is restoration god wants you to be free of this and to have and in order to have as father said you know to have a good relationship with your spouse um you need to let go of this um, and god will give you the grace to do that but you have to be willing to um, talk about it go for confession get the help that you need to start the process of freedom yes in the in con in the confessional you will not encounter any judgment in the confessional you meet the merciful heart of the father who just embraces you and there's a party in heaven because uh, a son or daughter who was lost is now found and a son or daughter who was far away from home has now come to the father's house so don't be discouraged if you are fighting the habit of porn watching but uh, look to the lord and he will, and you will be saved uh, so um but it is important to realize that it is not going to be helpful for your marriage uh to continue with this habit uh moving on uh when you were mentioning about your conversations about faith you mentioned that it's not enough to just say okay we are catholic and we are going to intend to be catholic because even among catholics there are differences right in the level of faith and understanding yeah. of faith and and devotions and i i i i've i've got to know that even uh, families can argue about the devotions that they are used to and what should trump for the husband's devotions or the wife's devotions and yeah. all these kinds of things so uh do you have any uh, insight to help like how to sort out that kind of conflict sure um again i think it's helpful to talk about these things beforehand um some of them i think are things that can be resolved if we're open to you know just different ways of uh relating to the lord because you know the catholic church is such a beautiful um, there's sort of uh, a lot of diversity in the ways different kinds of devotions different spiritualities and it's really beautiful you know um but at the same time uh it's possible that um you know someone may not be open at all to uh, your spirituality and your way of uh, meeting the lord and i think that can actually be a, a big problem so um you know joel and i we don't call ourselves charismatics um but we both grown up uh, formed by the charismatic renewal and that actually has been for me very important because i've seen uh, a lot of people are a little skeptical of the charismatic renewal but i've seen a lot of um, really good fruit in myself and in others of people who have been through that um and so for me i was looking for someone not someone who say hey i'm charismatic praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah but uh but someone who has that heart encounter with the holy spirit and who has that real commitment 
um so it's good to maybe uh, for people to examine their own faith and say okay what are the essentials what are the things that i need to see it's not so much labels as much as um how do i how does how do i relate to the lord and how do i hope that my spouse will relate to the lord and then also you know you have to be united in a marriage right you can't um, you know you can't have like one spouse sort of off on their own like on all of their prayer meetings and one spouse is like no i just sit at home and i pray or i I'm, i'll be in belankani you be at uh, pota and you know we'll meet somewhere after that <laughs> like it's good to have um, the same heart um but then also there is a certain amount of give and take right where you have to be willing to be open to it's not going to be exactly the same like even joy and i even though we're so similar in many ways you know like we almost can't stand each other's choice of like worship music <laughs> Uh, like, why are you listening to that? I'm like, oh, you're listening to stuff my parents listen to. <laughs> oh, that's surprising. But, <laughs> yeah, right. You assume that we're all on the same page, but you know, uh, we're quite different, and that's okay. You know, and as long as we're willing to um, sort of, first of all, not judge the other person for having different preferences to us. Um, and to be willing to say, hey, like that's really cool that you connect to the Lord in that way. Be willing to try something different. Um, you know, we can't be so close to say, "No, I would never." You know, I will never pray the liturgy of the hours, or I'm not the rosary type person, or or the other person. You know, might say, "No, we have to pray the rosary every single day," and that's really beautiful. Or we have to go for mass every single day. But now you have to both be willing to do that. You know, so again, it's good to talk about these things beforehand. Um, and to know where the other person is at because you might be at different places and different levels and you say I, am i willing to adjust to the other person or is this just like a no go for me so that again yeah. you find out before marriage better to find out before marriage yeah i think there is a a kind of a, a balance between togetherness and individuality that needs to be struck in a marriage because if if it, if there's too much togetherness then it can be suffocating there's a sense of a loss of an individuality and if there's too much individuality it could lead to the fragmentation of the relationship so um when you're discerning it's good to know where, like whether you have enough to keep you together and yeah. at the same time mm-hmm. enough to keep yourselves different you know that uniqueness right. of each individual person that applies yeah. and not enough just freedom to be yourself yeah i think enough freedom as well to know that um we are different like there's no two human beings are going to be exactly the same but you need to feel that the other person respects your differences as well um and because that gives you the room to also grow as a, an individual you know um uh, connected with what we were sharing you know um joel and i when we have our personal prayer time um so he he's much more um expressive and vocal than i am so i you know i remember on the first year of our marriage time i would hear him outside playing the guitar and singing and praising god aloud and then i would be like sitting with my journal and you know like writing to, <laughs> to jesus and you know we've learned from each other he started journaling and i try to you know sing aloud more um but there has to also just be like okay hey we're also different and it's okay to be different and to for to do different things and we shouldn't feel embarrassed to be different or that you have to do it exactly the way your spouse is doing it like okay hey, like it's good the way different okay um tell us some of the um the tips you give for discernment right uh, it could be like a preview for the upcoming video of that catholic couple about the green flags and the red flags when you're discerning um uh, maybe this is a kind of off the cuff so i'm not going to expect very exact answers but just from the top of your head whatever you can remember about you know what are the green flags and red flags when you're discerning marriage with someone Yeah so I actually yeah, included a section on this in the book as well um and as Joel and I have been preparing and talking about the next couple of videos for that Catholic couple we realized this is not something that we can give a very comprehensive list you know because there are so many different um things that can come up so many different situations so so whatever we share is just you know a few pointers um so I think just this is an overall tip for both green flags and red flags is um to be willing to um uh, talk to somebody else 
about your relationship because i think that sometimes when you're in a very isolated relationship you can ignore or just not notice uh red flags or think of everything as green flags um so i think it's helpful sometimes to have you know outside um involvement in your relationship um so i'm going to tell a personal story <laughs> i remember um i had joined catholic match and i went on a date this is, sounds really weird and odd but i actually went on a date with an american guy in america <laughs> so i was uh, going to visit i was going for a friend's wedding and to do some i was part of an american catholic organization and so um, and i was also talking with this guy on catholic match and um, i was like i'm going to be visiting my friends uh, well actually no i particularly visited my friend's mom because she, she lived in the same state as this guy and i was sort of like okay why not just meet him once just to get to know you know just to see if there's anything there like i wasn't didn't really think that there would be but i said me as well you know a real life meeting is always better than um uh, just talking so um i met this guy and uh i was with my same with my friends parents who are wonderful wonderful couple who really uh, love me and you know are very very um, parent like <laughs> um so they were like my parent replacements in the states and um, so i spent some time some hours with this guy and then i uh, my uh, friend's mom said why don't you bring him over for dinner just to you know just bring him over and i could have not done that and in fact i could have because because i didn't really see much there you know and i keep just kept talking the whole time it wasn't a very great date um but i brought him to my friend's house and um her parents were so great because they were really nice to him and you know we spent we ate together and then he left and then they sort of sat me down <laughs> and they told me their observations and it was actually really cool because um you know not that i had already already i was kind of like i don't think i don't really want to meet this guy again i don't see anything here but it was good to have that confirmation from them they were like okay you know um this guy wasn't really asking you any questions he was just talking and he wasn't really listening to you at all it seemed like he's very idealistic but he's not concerned with what you think and feel and a lot of different things that they noticed just from that one meeting <laughs> i was really uh, blessed by it you know and i'm sure you know maybe some people might do that in a not good way but i trusted their judgment they were very not at all judgmental type of people um but they had good judgment you know and they had a very very caring heart for me and sort of protective heart for me to say like okay like we want we want you to be safe we want you to be happy um and i was like how beautiful right and i was like this could actually be a good thing to make sure we do is to spend time with um couples that we trust people that we trust who would be able to observe sometimes things that could be problematic or things that could be good so, you know i really like the way that this guy treats you So yeah so i think that's just like an overall thing for red flags and green flags is have good solid people in your life who can help you identify those things so sure. um, that that's yeah. like a mirror for you to to uh, bounce your thoughts and feelings to yeah. and then you can yeah. get, get someone who whom you trust and who cares for you to yeah. uh, to speak truth to you yeah. right? without yeah. without uh, trying to um, what do you call it sugar coat it yeah yeah exactly exactly mm-hmm. and you can ask them you can say you know should i be concerned about this this happened and they can say yes you know you should be concerned about this should not like no one should ever treat you like this whereas you on your own might say oh you know everybody makes mistakes like he just did it one time um but sometimes you need someone else to just <laughs> you know help you to identify and say no i need to be treated with respect so yeah i think that would be a very helpful thing and overall thing is identifying uh yeah and pressure. i think that's an important uh, an important point you brought out i'd like to uh, reemphasize is the uh, the isolation aspect if you find that this person is uh, either consciously or unconsciously isolating you from other relationships and uh, yeah. uh showing that they are very jealous or possessive of you mm-hmm. even uh, when you're just on your first date or you yeah. you know just starting out on your relationship it's a big red flag 
because yeah. they are trying to isolate you from other relationships of concern yeah. uh, so that could be the start of a potentially abusive relationship yeah. and that's a very definitely. dangerous red flag i would definitely agree with that and i think some people are also more susceptible to um situations like that you know people who are used to always adjusting to others and who are very maybe a little more people pleaser of us are like that and you know it has its pros and cons but it can be dangerous in a relationship is when you know somebody comes in with a very strong um personality and opinions and sort of sweeps you along in a particular direction and you find yourself changing um your own thoughts and views and opinions about everything <laughs> to sort of suit them and you're isolated from others as well like that's definitely something to be very very careful of and i think it's happened to a lot of people so yeah i think a good safeguard for that is to say like hey is this the only person in my life you know is there <laughs> do i have other people that i am um uh, you know regularly in touch with who i have good relationships with others who are part of my life and who i'm also opening myself up to and sharing on a deeper level with just another thought i had when you were talking about conversations and you're going into so much detail about you know discernment of marriage uh, sometimes it feels like or it can sound like there's a kind of negotiation happening like it's a business deal that needs to be <laughs> sealed or, you know you you're trying to weigh the pros and cons whether mm-hmm. uh, you're going to win more or you're going to lose more and then the whole love aspect the the total free self giving aspect of it the romance of it can get lost uh, uh, how do you strike that balance yeah so i think some of this also shouldn't be only um, conversations like the it shouldn't be that the only way that you're relating to this person is on these very very deep conversational level um, you should also just be having fun together so i think it's good to um you know make time especially because these conversations can be very heavy <laughs> and like emotionally and intellectually you know, like sort of draining um so make sure that you're spacing it out with all right let's just go you know go for a music festival or you know go out and do something fun together or go for a walk in nature or just talk about fun stuff um so that you have to have that sort of sensitivity about as well to uh and sometimes you know one person might be more intense than the other <laughs> so sometimes the more light hearted one has to remind the more intense one say all right you know let's take a little break from these for a little while not because anything's going badly but just because we need a break um and because you're right you know like a relationship is not just based on a purely intellectual um you know negotiation level um those things are important and we talk about them because they're often left out but they can't be the whole and soul of our relationship our relationship is two persons also um being but together and you know showing a real interest in each other and just spending time together and that's what marriage is as well it's not about constantly like having very deep conversations or it's about just hanging out or just watching a movie together or just uh, kidding around so and those are also important things to see if you'll connect with each other on that level so make room for that you know god's given us our emotions as well and those are not to be discounted so um we should make room for that emotional level connection as well so i think we've just got another 2 minutes on our uh, uh live so uh, just for those who are very uh, interested to get a copy of a book from you susanna maybe you'd like to tell them how they can place orders with you and um uh, yeah just yeah. visit the uh, the website so i run a, an online matchmaking service called catholic disciples matchmaking service you can find it at www.catholicmatchmaking.in um and you on that page you'll find um a link to the to the book and to there's an order form a google form so um this has been self published so so far i'm uh, just literally mailing them out myself uh my husband's usually the one taking them to the <laughs> post office and mailing them out but we're hoping to get it actually published uh, properly and hoping to connect it with the uh, parishes as well uh, we'll see how the lord needs all of that um but yeah so it's pretty easy as long as you just go to the website www.catholicmatchmaking.in sure thanks for that susanna and and uh, i believe uh, there's a shortage of young catholic men registering so Uh, i would uh, i would encourage all you young catholic men out there 
there are very good catholic ladies just wondering where all the men are so please do register with catholic matchmaking and find the one that the lord has for you okay uh, to be a catholic man you need to be brave you need to be humble and to be willing to accept rejection and that uh, that's what jesus did in fact he proposed his love to humanity at the risk of being rejected and that's what he did on the cross you know he faced rejection so that's part of the game of love so so all you young men out there register with susanna and find your match wow that was a very quick one hour and thank you for all the wisdom shared susanna and god bless you and your ministry and your lovely husband and uh, uh, child and the one yet to come uh, we are all eagerly praying and waiting for the other bundle of joy that's going to come and may you have a happy and safe pregnancy and that both mother and child may be healthy is our prayer for you and Thank, Thank you so much, Pada. Thank you for hosting the Insta Live and for making this happen. Yeah. It's really it was good. I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this conversation. Same here. Praise Same God. here. And I hope that all the others who are live also have benefited from this. And share this uh, to people who you think will benefit from it, and especially those who are discerning marriage. Uh, so, what shall I do? Shall I give you a final blessing? That will be great. Okay, the Lord be with you. With us, Lord. And may Almighty God bless you and anoint you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining. I Thanks, hope Father. this gave.